Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is first lecture of this number theory series. And in this lecture, we are going to study about primality test. So let's start the lecture. So first of all, what is a primality test? Primality test is to determine whether the given integer is a prime number or not. So suppose the input is five, so the output should be true because five is a prime number. While if the input uh, input is not a prime number, of course the output would be false. So first of all, the naive approach or adopt or brute force approach would be to run a loop from two to less than n. That is two to n minus one. If the number is already one, we would return false because one is neither prime nor a uh, composite number so it is not a prime so we would return false otherwise we would run a loop from 1 to less than n and see if any of i divides the number n if it divides then we would return false otherwise we would return true so the complexity if you see of this algorithm is big o of n that is linear so let's try to improve upon this running time uh, running time of the algorithm so a better approach to towards the better approach let's learn something about the pairs so for each number n the divisors of number n occur in pairs such that a multiplied by b is equals to n so if you take an example of 12 the divisors of 12 are 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 which you can form the pairs as 1 12 2 6 and 3 4 if you see multiplication of each pair is equal to 12 3 times 4, 2 times 6, 1 times 12. Now, why we are studying about pairs is that, you see, uh, if you find one element of a pair, you don't have to find the other. You can simply find other by using one element of the pair. So, if you have one, what is the another element of this pair? Of course, it is 12 by 1. That is 12. Now, if you have two, the other member of this pair is 12 by 2 that is 6 if you have 3 the other mem member of this pair is 12 by 3 that is 4 so uh, you, you see if in this case all you have to do is run a loop from 1 to 3 only you don't have to go beyond 3 uh, so if you have one element of a pair you can find another and using that fact we see oh, for this example all we have to do is run a loop from 1 to 3 not above that because uh, from 1 to 3 whenever we get a divisor we simply divide n by that number and then we get the another divisor but the problem is 3 is limit for 12 how to get the limit for each number n because for 15 you may have to run a loop above above 3 up to above 3 but you have no idea what is the limit till which you have to run the loop so let's find what is the limit of that uh, n of any number n so that we have to run loop from 1 to uh, that limit not completely till n so you see the claim is uh, for for a divisor pair a b one of them lies below square root of n and another one lies above square root of n so to prove this claim uh, we can divide the proof in three cases first a and b both are below square root of n a and b both are above square root of n and of course the third case would be this and since we are claiming that this is true hence case 1 and case 2 should be wrong so let's prove this first take, in, uh, take this case case 1 where both a and b are below square root of n so uh, let's uh, we would prove it by contradiction so let's assume that this statement that is case 1 is true hence a is less than square root of n and b is less than square root of n but if this holds then a multiplied by b would be less than n which contradicts our statement that a and b are equal to n and we reach this contradiction because the assumption that we made is actually wrong hence this is not true this statement is actually false now let's prove 
case 2. Now we would prove case 2 using the same argument that we did before. So let's assume that case 2 is actually true. If that's the case then a would be greater than square root of n and so would be b. But then if that's true a into b would be greater than n which again contradicts our statement or the fact that a into b is equals to n. And we, re we reach this contradiction because the assumption that we made is actually wrong. Hence case 2 is also not true. Uh, to prove case 3 that is one is below square root of n and another one is above square root of n we would prove it directly. We would use direct proof to prove this. Uh, we can write a as square root of n multiplied by square root of n divided by b. Right? So subcase 1 is when b is less than square root of a or square root of n. If b is below square root of n then a should be above square root of n of course. If b is below square root of n which would give square root of n divided by b would be greater than 1. And hence I can write square root of n divided by b as 1 plus x since square root of n divided by b is greater than 1. And if you expand it you would get a is equal to square root of n plus x into square root of n which directly shows that a is greater than square root of n. So see we taken a b smaller than square root of n then a comes out to be greater than square root of n. Same goes for this. If you assume a to be square root of n or uh, greater than square root of n then uh, square root of n divided by b would be smaller than 1. Since uh, square root of n divided by b is smaller than 1 then I can write it as 1 minus x. Uh, so if I put this value 1 minus x into this equation it would become a is equals to square root of n multiplied by 1 minus x which certainly would be a uh, would come out to be this that a is smaller than square root of n because if you expand it you would get square root of n minus x into square root of n and hence a would be smaller than square root of n so if you are taking b smaller than square root of n then a is coming out to be greater than square root of n and if you are taking b as greater than square root of n then a is coming out to be smaller than square root of n and hence we have proved that case 3 is actually true using direct proof. Now using this fact we know that in a pair one element is always below square root of n or below or equal to square root of n if the number is actually perfect square. So now uh, since uh, suppose 25 so uh, square root of 25 is 5 so the pair element of 5 would be 25 divided by 5 that is 5 so pair would be 5 comma 5 so we can see uh, if number n is perfect square then both the divisor element of one pair lies on square root of n otherwise all lie below square root of n and above square root of n so since now we have two facts fact 1 if you find one element of a pair you don't have to find another because you can simply calculate it you don't have to find you can simply calculate it if you find one element to be 5 you can simply divide n divide by 5 and you get your another element now second is that one of them lies always below or up to equal to square root of n so this gives us the upper bound so we don't have to go above, uh, sorry, above square root of n we can run a loop till square root of n and find all the devices so you see 1 2 and 3 all of these elements which lie below square root of n uh, for 12 because uh, square root of 12 would be 3 point something something so 1 2 and 3 all these three lie below square root of n so we don't have to go above uh, 3 we can run a loop till 3 and we would find all the divisors so to check whether a number is divisible uh, is a prime number or not all we have to do is run a loop till square root of n if there is a divisor then we can find it till square root of n we don't have to go above and if we don't find any divisor till square root of n then the number is actually a prime number so how we can modify the solution is prime if n is equals to 1 we would return false otherwise we would run a loop from 2 to square root of n and since i square is less than equals to n hence i would be less than equals to square root of n 
so if i into i is less than equals to n that is we are checking uh, whether we are running a loop till square root of n or not so basically we are running a loop from 2 to square root of n and if number is divisible by uh, this uh, if number n is divisible by n then answer is 0 oh sorry if n is divisible by i then we would return false because we have found a divisor otherwise if after running all uh, through all this loop we don't find any divisor hence the number is actually prime number so what is the complexity of course the uh, the loop is running from 2 to square root of n hence the complexity is square root of n so now we see we started from naive algorithm which was running in big of n time now we have uh, modified that solution using little bit of mathematics and now we have a solution which runs in square root of n time try to play with this using pen and paper and you would uh, this would get into your head easily so till the next video drops i'll be taking three four or two or three practice problems to apply this algorithm so till then yep keep coding and keep playing with this thing